Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day six in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website. We're gonna help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to becoming an expert. Today, I wanna give you a general overview of the main interface of Logic and also give you a brief introduction to some of the most commonly used areas in the application. In the first five videos, we really honed in on getting set up with Logic Pro from downloading and installing both the application as well as the sound library content that comes with it, to setting up any audio interface, USB microphone, or controllers that you might own and want to use when you're working in Logic. In some ways, I sort of cut ahead navigating through different areas and settings. So today, I wanna to take a step back and just give you a good general overview of the main window that we have in front of us on screen. Everything in Logic Pro really revolves around a single window interface that we call the main window. At the top of the main window, we have what is called the control bar. The control bar provides different buttons to access other areas of the application, transport buttons that allow you to begin and stop playback and recording in your projects, a fader to adjust the master volume of the project as a whole, and in the center of the control bar, we have what we call the LCD. The LCD provides specific bits of information that can be helpful, such as the tempo of the project, time and key signature, as well as the location of the playhead Underneath the control bar, taking up most of the main window interface is what we call the tracks area. The tracks area is made up with all the tracks, recordings, performances, and audio files that you are using in your projects. Along the left-hand side from top to bottom, we have track headers for each of the tracks. To the right of each individual track header, we have track lanes, which the corresponding recordings, performances, and audio files reside on. And these colored blocks along the track lanes for each track are what we call regions. These regions represent the recordings, the performances, and audio files that you're committing to your projects and arranging. The tracks area is typically where most folks begin recording and arranging their projects. And the tracks area is very much a linear style of playback and production. What I mean by that is, is we have a playhead starting at bar nine. And when we begin playing this project, the playhead will move from left to right. Time begins on the left-hand side and works its way to the right. And depending on where individual regions are in your project, those performances or parts only begin playing as the playhead passes over them. So for example, let's move the playhead by clicking and dragging it from bar nine to bar 61, as we can see here in the LCD at the top. And let's pay attention to how some of these sounds come in and out of the picture based on where the playhead is. Specifically, let's listen for the Solaris chop vocal track here on track 26. Here we go. Each track header on the left-hand side also provides some quick and easy access to channel strip controls of your tracks. For example, we can balance either the level of a track using the fader right here, as well as place it anywhere from left to right using the pan knob. Let's give it a try right now. I'll adjust the balance of the chop vocal track here. To the left of the fader and pan knob, we can also choose to mute or solo our tracks. When we mute a track, we stop playback of that track. We won't hear it at all in the project. So as you could hear, I muted and then unmuted and muted again. From there, we can solo individual tracks, which is the opposite of muting. Instead of stopping playback of that track, we'll only hear playback of the solo tracks and nothing else in the project. After solo, there's a button to record enable our tracks. As you saw in the previous videos of this series, if you want to begin recording to any track type in your projects, you would first record enable that track, 
And from there, we could click record to begin recording to this track. And next to the record enable button on audio tracks, we have the input monitoring button. The input monitoring allows you to hear the track that you want to record, but without having to record enable it. A great way to be able to rehearse along with your projects. As you start to record and lay down your ideas, you may find that you want to do a little bit of arranging. Maybe you want a part to come earlier in the song or later, or maybe a part is a better fit on a different track. You can move regions around just by clicking and dragging either forward in time or backwards. So now this vocal chop will occur later in the song, and perhaps we decide that these old school key parts would be better as a piano part. So we could solo the piano, take a listen. You can also select multiple regions by clicking outside of a region and dragging across the multiple regions you want to select. And now we can move all three of these old school key parts down to the Yamaha Grand Piano track. And we even see a little circle with the number three that lets us know that we have selected three different regions. Although a lot of the action in Logic Pro occurs here in the tracks area, there's a number of other areas that you will find you'll be using again and again. To access these different areas, we're gonna use the buttons in the control bar at the top. And again, this is just a brief introduction to the interface of Logic. We'll dig into each of these areas specifically with their own dedicated videos throughout this series. First, we're gonna open the inspector, which is the button with an eye in a circle. The inspector shows us a channel strip for our selected track. Every track has an associated channel strip. Channel strips provide more extensive controls of the tracks in your projects. Just like with a track header, the channel strip provides you with a fader for adjusting volume, pan knob for adjusting placement of a track from left to right, but you can also process your tracks by opening different plugins, and you can send the audio from your different tracks to other channel strips in your projects for further processing. For example, when I dial up bus one, we're sending more of the piano signal to a reverb. Let's take a listen right now. Software instrument tracks and audio tracks provide slightly different options for the input section. For example, a software instrument, the input section is the instrument. While for audio tracks, the input section would be an input from your audio interface or microphone. And there's also the region inspector and track inspector that allow you to view and edit different parameters for your selected region or track. For example, we could transpose these electric guitar regions if we wanted to. Next, we have the library, which is this button right here that looks like a filing cabinet drawer. The library allows you to pick through different preset sounds or patches. And a patch is basically a preset sound that comes with different plugins, routing, instruments, and more already loaded. For example, if we select this synth pad here, and let's take a quick listen to it. If we select the track header for the synth pad, the library updates offering us different software instrument patches that we could load onto the synth pad track. So perhaps I'm not feeling this particular sound. We could maybe go down to the vintage Mellotron and select the string and flute option. And now the sound for this instrument has been updated. If we open up the inspector once more, and we close the different region and track inspectors, we can see the routing, the plugins, the instrument update on the channel strip. And for audio tracks, we can do the same thing. So we take a listen to this electric guitar. We could choose a different patch for processing the electric guitar. So if we go under experimental, maybe go to textures, and let's take a listen to the wet splinters patch. And you can see that the plugins and routing updated on the channel strip for the electric guitar audio track. Next, we have smart controls. Smart controls are an intuitive and easy way for you to adjust the sound of the selected track 
using on-screen controls. For example, if we solo the synth chords here and select the track header, the smart controls update and provides us with all sorts of performance controls. Let's take a listen and I'll make some quick adjustments. And again, the smart controls update based on which instrument you have selected. So if you need quick and easy access to the processing of your tracks, smart controls can be great. But if you're looking for a little more nuance and fine tuned control, let's go ahead and open the mixer, which is the button with a series of sliders. The mixer is basically the contents of the inspector, but for every track in your project. If we open up the inspector once more, we can see the chop brass channel strip, both in the inspector and in the mixer, as well as the channel strips for every other track in this project. We can adjust the amount of real estate each one of these areas takes up by clicking and dragging on the border of those areas. So I've adjusted how much real estate the mixer takes up, as well as I'll expand the inspector or shrink it. Every track in your project has a corresponding channel strip that goes along with it. If we select a track, the corresponding channel strip is selected in the mixer, and this channel strip is updated in the inspector, but not every channel strip in your project has an associated track. If we select this channel strip for a small room reverb, we don't see the tracks area updated, but if I select a channel strip for a track, we see that the tracks area updates to select that track lane. Let's now close the mixer, and the next area that you'll often use is the editors window. And the editor window will allow you to further fine tune and edit the different regions on your different tracks. So let's select a software instrument track. And when we select the synth core track, we can see that the editor has been updated to show us the MIDI data for our software instrument performance. Let's expand the real estate for this editor and let's zoom in. I'm gonna use the sliders right here. I'll squash it up and expand. And now we see all the individual notes for this performance. And we can play back just this performance by pressing on the play button in the header here within the editor. If we want to change any aspect of this performance, we can select the individual notes. We'll hear them play back. Let's say I want to delete these notes. And these notes I want to expand. I just click and drag on the left or right edge of the notes and expand them. And again, the editor updates based on which track type you select. So if I select an audio track, we'll now see the regions of the audio waveforms right here. So let's expand the view, play it back. We could start chopping up this region if we wanted to, adjust region boundaries, and we can see it's being reflected in the tracks area which we'll hear back when we play our project. And then we have the Apple Loops browser, which is the button on the right-hand side of the control bar. And the Apple Loops browser provides you with thousands of pre-recorded, pre-programmed samples and loops. They're royalty-free, and you can use them any way you see fit for your projects. You can take a listen to an audio loop just by clicking on the loop in the browser. And what's great about Apple Loops is that they change their timing and key to match that of the tempo and key signature of your projects. And you can click and drag a loop directly into your project. Let's take a listen to this added electric arpeggio Apple Loop. I quickly use the key command L to loop the selected region so we could hear the electric arpeggio again and again. The Apple Loops browser is well worth taking a look through. You can choose through different instruments, genres, and descriptors to find a loop or a sample that might work for your project. And finally, there's one other area that I want to point out. 
if we go right here into the heading of the tracks area, we can show and hide an area of Logic Pro called the Live Loops Grid. If we click on this button, we now see next to the tracks area, a completely different view that we could potentially use for producing and recording. I'm gonna bring attention from the tracks area to that of the Live Loops area, and I'm going to close the tracks area. The Live Loops Grid is the opposite of the tracks area where it's not so much a linear style production. Instead, you record your different ideas into different cells, and then you can begin playing back any cell by clicking on one. Cells play back on a loop basis, so we will hear the space play again and again and again in a loop. And then we can begin playback of any other cell on any other track to try out different ideas side by side. And just like with the tracks area, each track header has a row of cells that corresponds to that instrument or track type. And the different areas of logic, such as the library, the inspector, smart controls, the editors, fall along with the selection of a cell or track in the Live Loops grid. All right, tomorrow in this Newbie to Ninja series, let's explore transport and playback for your projects. Take care.